One of the major problems in America today is the disposal of commercial and residential trash. The average person throws away about five pounds of trash each day. Approximately half of this is waste paper. The other half consists of glass, metal, yard waste, garbage, cloth, and water. Much of this trash finds its way to the municipal sanitary landfill, where it is buried or blown away in the wind, lost forever as a natural resource. More importantly, it poses a serious threat to the environment. Newspapers, television, the youth on campus, everyone is becoming concerned with land pollution. Today, the Black Claussen Company is doing something about it. Since municipal solid waste is generally composed of 50% paper or paper products by weight, the company has developed a wet processing system, a system resembling in some respects those employed in secondary fiber paper board mills. In addition, the system provides a method of reclaiming paper fiber, glass, and metal so they can be recycled into our economy. Waste paper is only 40 to 50% of residential trash by weight. It can, however, make up as much as 75% of its volume. This paper does not look much dirtier than the paper currently being used by mills that process mixed waste paper and produce such items as packaging containers or other multi-plyboard material. This is a schematic diagram of the pilot hydrosposal fiber claim plant in Middletown, Ohio. The blue line represents the major flow line of paper fibers. The red lines indicate other byproducts and rejected materials of the system. The hydrosposal portion of the system consists of the hydropulper and the other equipment seen here a junk remover, screw thickener, and the tank in the background. Commercial systems would also include a fluid bed reactor, which is not a part of the pilot system. The components associated with the fiber claim portion of the system are seen here paper mill screens, cleaners, and other normal mill equipment. At the input end of the pilot plant, refuse is shoveled onto a conveyor belt, which can supply material to the hydropulper at the rate of one ton an hour. This trash is typical of that collected from residential areas today. Here, some familiar items enter the hydropulper. Plastic bags which are becoming quite common as refuse containers. These are easily ground up in the system. Also beer cans and a lot of paper waste. Almost anything that comes in a residential trash can is accepted by this small four-foot pulper. Larger commercial pulpers, which go up to 20 feet in diameter, have no problem handling anything that would come in a 20-gallon garbage can. There are over 3,000 commercial-sized hydropulpers used in the paper industry today. As items fall into the vortex, they are dispersed almost immediately. About 90% of the waste material is ground into chunks no larger than three-quarters of an inch in size, which are pumped out of the pulper as a slurry for further processing. Items which are not ground up, such as large pieces of metal, 
cans, rocks, and bones are rejected out the side of the pulper via a chute to a coarse junk remover. Most of the metal that has gone into the pulper is rejected at this point and can be separated for metal reclamation. About 10% of the original refuse has been removed at this point. The slurry containing about 3% solids is passed on to the liquid cyclone. Here, heavy inorganic material such as glass, ground up aluminum, bone, rock and sand are removed. This represents about 10% of the original refuse. The collection chamber of a liquid cyclone yields clean chunks of glass and aluminum, free from all organic material. The output from this stage of the system can be recycled to the glass industry. The slurry continues on to a defibering screen. At this point, any flakes of paper in the slurry are broken down into discrete fibers, and larger materials such as rags, plastic, string, and twigs, are separated from the fibers by passing through a screen with one eighth inch diameter holes. The accepted material passes through the defibering screen to the dilution tank. Here, the slurry is diluted down to one half percent solids to aid screening in the subsequent paper mill screen. The diluted material goes to a selectifier screen, which has perforations only one sixteenth of an inch in diameter. Its purpose is to remove more material, which is undesirable in the paper stock. The material that passes through the selectifier is primarily paper fiber, very small inorganic material, and organic material, such as ground up food waste. It then goes to centrifugal cleaners, which will remove most of the inorganic material that remains. Irregularly shaped objects are also removed. Although there is some fiber loss at this point, it is insignificant. The primary purpose is to remove the inorganic dirt. The rejected material seen scaling down the tank in the background is combined with rejects from the defibering and selectifier screen. Together, they represent 35% of the incoming refuse. They travel to an inclined screw thickener, where much of the moisture is removed. Ultimately, the thickened rejects, plastics, rag fiber, food waste, paper fiber, and some inorganic material are sent to be burned in a fluid bed reactor. This reactor is a very efficient combustion unit, which more than meets today's air pollution standards. The accepted material from the centrifugal cleaners goes to a side hill screen where the long prime paper fibers are selected. As the slurry travels down the screen, the water flows through, carrying along the small, fine paper fibers. The slurry containing the prime fibers is then reduced to 10% solids in an inclined screw thickness, and to 40% solids in a V-press thickener. At this point, the recovered fibers represent about 20% of the incoming refuse. They can now be economically transported to the paper mills that will recycle these fibers back into the economy. In conclusion, the objective of the hydrosposal fiber claim system is not the disposal of waste. Instead, to collect the useless, land-polluting trash of our cities and recycle it. The result? useful raw materials for the American economy, 
and a cleaner America.